Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. In the last few days, I illustrated a parametric and a historical simulation approach to estimating value at risk, or VAR. Today, I'd like to introduce a basic approach in the third way to estimating value at risk, and that is the Monte Carlo simulation. So I'll start here with a basic Monte Carlo simulation, and that is in regard to the asset class that is equities or stocks. The FR, as FRM candidates, we're following John Hull, and he employs a popular and common process to model stock returns or stock prices, and that is Brownian motion. So that's what this Monte Carlo simulation is a simple Brownian motion application. And so just to show you how this works, here's the formula from John Hall that describes Brownian motion and it says on the left here that the natural log of today's price divided by yesterday's price, that's if the periods are daily, price T divided by price T1, take the natural log, that's the continuously compounded periodic return for the stock. And so we're saying the periodic return on a continuously compounded frequency is approximately normally distributed with mean here of drift minus half of the variance over time and volatility here of the volatility multiplied by the square root of time. That's our square root rule where we say volatility scales with the square root of time. So we've got a periodic return on a continuous basis that is approximately normally distributed and this is why we say that price levels are log normal. That's because the natural log of the returns is normally distributed. If the natural log is normally distributed we say here the price levels or ratio of prices is log normally distributed. So this Brownian motion ends up being a what we could call a diff log normal diffusion process. So I won't go into more detail on that formula here but show you the simpler at least equivalent implementation here in the model of the Monte Carlo simulation. So here really is the same thing and again we've got the periodic return natural log of the price over yesterday's price is equal to two components here a deterministic component and a stochastic component. The deterministic component is the drift. We're expecting the stock price to drift upward. It has some positive expected return over time. So that's the fixed piece. But then there is a random shock. It's going to be a function of the volatility multiplied by here z, which is a random variable. So that random variable is scaled by volatility and that allows us to model this as a stochastic process. Here I'm hitting recalc so I get a different series each time and that random z is allowing me to do that. So let me just show you how this is implemented in the Excel here. I only need three assumptions. I ha Those are in yellow. An annual drift or expected return for the stock I'm going to assume 10%, an annual volatility of the stock, I'll assume 40%, and then I'm going to assume the stock starts at $100. So then I need to do a few conversions here. First I compute, excuse me, I convert the annual drift to a daily drift, and to do that I simply divide it by the annual drift by 252. I'm assuming that there's 252 trading days in a year. So you can see I just divided that into a converted the annual drift into a daily drift and then I also did the same thing for the volatility converted uh, the annual volatility 40 percent into a daily volatility but remember I don't divide by 252 there I'm dividing by the square root of 252 the square root rule volatility scales with the square root of time because variance scales with time directly so that gives me the daily volatility and I'm almost ready. I just need to take this daily drift and convert it into a, an expected daily drift 
by subtracting one half the variance. So what I like to say about that in words is that at least under this geometric averaging the volatility is eroding returns. This goes to the ambiguous definition of return but for now without going into detail of that let's just note that the daily drift is experiencing some drag as a function of the variance and we end up with the two things we really need to model the Brownian motion which is a daily volatility and a daily drift. So now I'm going to model these down and what I have is one column for each day. So this is tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and they're stitched together in sequence and here's the plot. Each time I hit F9 I get a new plot. If I take a look at the first day, the first thing I want to do is compute this random z here. This is a function and we've seen this a lot in quantitative finance norm s n of random. Random gives me the probability uh, between 0 and 1 and norm s n then translates that into the inverse standard normal cumulative distribution. So it's going to give me a value generally between negative 3 and 3 and the idea of that is I get to randomize my volatility and then I'm having done that I can now implement this formula for Brownian motion here and if we take a look at this on my first day you'll see how simple this is I'm saying tomorrow it's the price is going to be a function of drift plus my volatility multiplied by that random z that I just calculated. So we can see my drift is here. That's my expected daily return. So if I just stop there, what I would get here is a straight, straight, slightly upward sloping line. My drift would be constant. But then I enter then I add to that the random shock. So it's going to be my volatility, my daily volatility, that's right here, 2.52%, multiplied by this random z right up here. In this case, happens to be negative 1.19. Remember, that's going to tend to be between negative 3 to 3. So that's going to random, that effectively randomizes my volatility and adds a shock to the constant drift. So that's the essence here. Constant drift plus, plus random shock as a function of the volatility. And that gives me my log return. And finally, here I simply multiply that today's price of 100 by e raised to that return or the exponential function of. And that gives me tomorrow's price. And then on the next day, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take that, calculate that, that log return, which is drift plus randomized shock. And I'm going to take the previous price and multiply it by the exponential function of this log return. And so each day I get a new price that's a function of the previous price but it's randomized because I've got these random variables which will change here each time. And as I hit F9, each time to recalc, I get a new series based on my Brownian motion for a model of the stock price. So that's an introduction to a real basic Monte Carlo simulation. This is David Harper, The Bonic Turtle. Thanks for your time. <music>